I'm just sitting here just spinning out that I'm sitting here with Leela McSpadden and Ron Schumann together in Arizona, like it's the spiritual home place of non-wing racing in America in a lot of ways. It's so good to finally meet you two. Thank you so much for your time here on the road to Knoxville. So, you two had a, a friendship long before you really went racing, uh, Leland. You were saying that it was really Ron's brother that got you into racing cars. Yeah, you know, we, we all lived in the same town, went to school together. Ronnie was about four or five years behind us, but uh, Billy and I ran around together, and Billy bought an old Super Modified and uh, kind of talked me into going and helping him work on it and wrench it while he was driving. And when he moved up to the sprint cars, uh, I bought the car and uh, that's where I started. And then when I moved up to a ride in another Super Modified, uh, the guy that was taking, helping me take care of my car took Ronnie and went to Tucson and he started in that same car. So we kind of had a tie in racing and school and everything else. I gotta say I'm very, very grateful to your brother because we got one of the true greats of the sport through that. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, you know, me and Billy didn't get along very good either in our younger days, and, and uh, we argued and fought. And, but he, he uh, I was just a little bit behind him. Like, he was on motorcycles, and I got on motorcycles. As soon as I got on motorcycles, he got into cars. And then when he went up to sprint cars, then I got into modified. So we really didn't race together a lot until 75 or 76 when we were both running sprint cars together. So, uh, but it was, it was a... It was pretty a tight-knit deal back in the, when we all started together. Can you show me the picture of the motorcycle that you have there, the 121? This is this looks like it's come straight off the On Any Sunday movie <laughs> right here. Now, there's something in the number there you were telling me about with uh, Leland. Well, Leland didn't remember, but the same day that we that he signed up to race motorcycles at Manzanita Speedway, I was right behind him. He signed up and got number 120, and I signed up and got number 121. <laughs> I remembered it all the whole through the whole time, and he just—he didn't race motorcycles very long, so no. he forgot all about it. But importantly, you raced in barn racing. What is barn racing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you both, you both went barn, very good. Barn racing is nothing but a bunch of guys going to a slick floored concrete. Some of them had posts, some of them didn't have posts. But anyway, we called it a barn because it used to be an old hay barn, and the farm moved on, and it was just an empty building. And we just all started, and you just drag your motorcycle down there, and everybody would show up, and we'd just start racing each other. No money, no nothing. We still tried to kill each other, and then we'd all go drink beer together. That must have been great times. <laughs> it was good times. You know, it was back when you could really enjoy stuff, and, and there wasn't a lot of people getting you in trouble or chasing you off or that kind of stuff. You know, occasionally they'd run you off, but, you know, there wasn't the liability and all the other stuff that there is for the kids now. Leland, you never had anybody in your family that raced before you, so there was no direct bloodline that said, I'm going to be a race car driver, was no, there? No, nothing at all, you know. Uh, I think it was more from hanging out with all the people that we went to school with, you know. I think everybody kind of got into motorcycles and, you know, like this run around did thing. We did used to do a lot of, I call it desert riding, but I mean, we all had little motorcycles whatever we could afford. And we'd all go on rides on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, you know, maybe go across the desert 20, 30 miles, that kind of stuff. So it just kind of, all of us running around together. So there was boat racing and a bit of drag racing and stuff in your portfolio before you started with the sprint cars? Yeah. Why sprint cars? Well, like I said, I think it all led to where, uh, like I told you earlier, there was a guy in Tempe that Yep. that was racing sprint cars and was well known in the sprint car circles. And uh, they had a little sand buggy shop down in downtown Tempe. And I think a lot of us used to go hang out there. And Billy, Ronnie's brother, their dad had a automotive shop, Schumann's yep. Auto Clinic in Tempe. And uh, when Billy bought the Super Modified, I think that kind of started. <coughs> Billy and Ronnie were both racing motorcycles real heavy before Billy bought the Super Modified. But I think McClung was kind of the influence, him and Tempe Jim were kind of the influence that got most of us started. You started fairly late too in sprint cars. You are saying about 25 years of age or thereabouts and you raced for 25 years. To me it seems, Leland, it seemed like so much longer. Well, I don't know whether it was longer, but it was, it was long enough 
At the, when you finished, was it time to finish? Uh, I actually quit to do uh, some other stuff, some pavement racing with the trucks. It was when they were going to start the NASCAR truck deal. And it was kind of a pre-series that they were doing with that type of deal. And I'd done some testing with, a, with an outfit and wanted to devote all my time to it. Well, the team that I was doing the testing with that folded right after the oh. So wow. that was kind of it. And then I didn't want to come back and do a dirt race. I kind of promised my wife that if I ever quit, I wouldn't come back. And so I kind of had to honor that deal, and it was time. And you also said to me too that you know your focus was on your family. You know you could have raced full time if you wanted to quit your job and go out on the road, but you wanted to be around your kids and, and your wife. Well, you know, like I said, by the by starting late, by the time I got where people were hiring me, you know, and you were a hired person, uh, my kids were of age that I didn't want to be on the road with kids living out of a motor. And back then, you didn't have motor homes; you had vans. Yeah. And pickups and that kind of stuff. It was, a lot different kind of racing back then. Leland, when you started racing, you know, back in the in the day, and with that modified, did you ever dream that you'd be travelling to places like Australia and, you know, racing on the other side of the world and, and eking out a pretty good life for yourself? Did that ever occur to you early, or was it just like I'm just going to race the next race? No, we just ran. You know, basically started out just a local deal, and then you'd get a call to drive for somebody else. I think Stanton kind of started the factory car thing or whatever you want to call it and I was on the infamous deal of, of him starting that whole mess and <laughs> we ran at Manzanita in 77 and about two thirds of the way halfway through the season we got in a feud with the local association and him and I decided to go start running hitting the road and that's basically how we kind of branched out and got started. Over the years, you've ran so many different genres of the sport, Leland, you know, with, with midget racing, with wing sprint, with non-wing sprint, with silver crown cars, you know, pavement stuff as well. Is there a favorite genre for you? Is there a part that you enjoyed more than anything else? I liked all of it, but I think the sprint car non-wing was, was what I enjoyed the most, and I think that's what I did the most. That's what I started in here locally, and I think it just kind of carried over through. I always felt like I had more of an advantage with that kind of racing. And it's fair to say, Leland, that the non-wing sprint stuff could get you in a bit of trouble. Like, out of all the forms of oval track racing, you can unload pretty big in a non-wing sprint. Like, it's ragged edge stuff. Yeah, well, when they tip over, they usually tip over a little harder than the wing stuff does. You don't have that cushion on the first hit. Knoxville Raceway, can I ask you about your time there? Um... I went around about five races at Knoxville through my career. Uh, we went there in 77. We actually went back east and ran a series of outlaw races that they're running in the local tracks there. Ran against Wolfgang, some of the other ones, and flipped the car out of the ballpark in Kansas City uh, the week before the Nationals. Went to Nance's shop and we re put a front half on the car rebuilt the car, went to Knoxville, qualified for the race, started 13th and ran second to Wolfgang the first year that Wolfie won the race. So pretty good memories, some of the good memories, some of the bad memories. Ron, how, how would you think that people, you know, would remember and respect um, Leland? Like, how do people regard him as a racer, as a racer yourself, and someone who's been a friend of his for, well, probably 30, 40 years? Well, He's way, way, way more exciting to watch than what I was. I was always pretty calm. Leland, I mean, they didn't call me the tornado. They called him the tornado. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, you know, these guys had, Billy and, my, and Leland, um, they both had jobs during the week. So they made their money Monday through Friday. And then they were having fun on Friday and Saturday. So they may crash or they may win or, and... and I was more into, if I don't finish, I don't make no money, so I was more of a, a finisher, but I still won some pretty good races, so it wasn't like I was just laid back all the time. Yes, the tornado. We used to say Ronnie counted his money as he was taking the checkered flag, <laughs> but seriously, you know, this guy, 
was a calculated racer. And you can ask anybody, when they put up the big money, he was always there. He always figured out how to be there. And you, he was one of them kind of guys, you didn't really see him coming, but he just kind of all of a sudden he's in the picture. And he probably won more of the big shows on average that he raced than about anybody that I know that drove sprint cars.